got my corn and yule post in position. I'm going to continue and put in the second one. Yeah, I was going to put it in this position, which is approximately two meters from the corner post. Move it over there to, it, to attach to that rafter. And it would be between the corner post and this post will be about a meter and a half. And I think it's going to be a lot more, a lot more sturdy. The top railing is too long. This is what worries me. That there's too much give in it. If I make the top railing a bit shorter, there's hardly any movement in there at all. So once again, I'm cutting out that little lip so that it can rest on the beam. And then I should be able to knock all these little pieces of wood out quite easily. Then it's all sanded off, sanded smooth, I can go and put it in position. I'm going to cut this section out. Directly below this area is the beam and the newel post is going to rest on there. And all I'm going to do now is drill some holes and cut it out with a jigsaw. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to see how I did that. Okay, so this newel post has been installed. If I put in five of these spindles, which I think are called balusters, then the distance between there is 18 and a half centimeters. Start off with the bottom railing. This is the railing that gets uh, attached to the floor. And you can see on the inside there's a little indentation. And I'll mark 18 and a half centimeters all the way along. And because this bottom railing is five centimeters or two inches wide, I set this to one inch and with that little sharp uh, point, sharp nail, I can actually mark it exactly in the center. Then I pre-drill my holes for the screws. Well, from the underneath, there, I'm going to be putting in all these screws all the way along. And by screwing the screws all the way through so they just stick out, it's going to be a lot easier to center the baluster on top. So now it's just a matter of centering, centering the balustrade over the screw. and screwing it in. Look at the top railing which is completely different. This is the top surface and underneath it has a also a cutout. But that slides out and can, you can actually pull it right off. Again every 18 and a half centimeters gets marked off. 12 millimeters exactly. Now it's a matter of placing this insert with the protruding screws onto the spindles and screwing them in. Now I can get the top railing and place it on top of the insert and squeeze it in. First of all I'm going to countersink the screws. I'm going to pre-drill the hole for the screw. I always do that with softer wood so I don't get any splitting. Because the balusters have only been secured with one screw over there, they do tend to spin around a little bit. So to do that I'm going to put 
a little screw in the side. This is what the profile of the bottom rail looks like. What I'm afraid of is when I put the screw in, it might actually pull the center down and cause a split because it is supported by the two edges and there's no support in the middle. So I'm going to be putting in a little wooden spacer like that, which is the same height as the sides. So I just put some glue on the back and I'm going to press it into place. Doing some work on the top rail. This is the uh, 12 millimeter wooden plug. I have to drill a hole in there and then it connects to the newel post. And later on I'm going to be gluing it in. So now I'm inside again. There's the newel post and I put the top rail right up against it to get the height and make a mark. And I do the same on the other post. And I've had to loosen the screws at the bottom a little bit so I can prise that open. And it goes perfectly in. I've got another four of these to do before I get to the end of the mezzanine floor. I'm quite happy with the results and um, I think it looks good. And thank you for watching.